Before my husband and I were married, we really got to know each other at work, except for it wasn't at an office. It was actually in the jungles of southern Mexico at archaeological sites and pyramids. We traveled with doctors, scientists, and researchers documenting in Mexico. And we went everywhere. We began to see a different side of Mexico, a side that um, you never really see. We started seeing people that look like me. And these people are not counted in the census. And the media doesn't do a great job of showcasing them positively. So we take photos. And we went to go take their photo, and they told us no. So at first, we thought that they were just being shy. And through an interpreter, we realized that they were actually saying that they were ugly. <clears throat> like this woman, who told us to take photos of people who she thought were more beautiful because they had fairer skin or less African features. Or these children who ran away, and this, this girl, who looked like an actual model tall, beautiful, but when I said that I wanted to take her photo, she said, me fail, means I'm ugly. And you can see she ran so fast that she probably had another career in track because you can see the <laughs> dust behind her feet. And this phenomenon, unfortunately, wasn't isolated just to Mexico. In the South Pacific, where we conducted field research, surprisingly, the youth, especially there, had a self-confidence issue and identity, thinking that because of different legends and myths that were told of a cannibalistic past prior to European contact, that they were a savage people. And as you can see here, there's a photo. Well, actually, it's not even a photo. It's a drawing of someone's idea of a cannibalistic ritual taking place in the 1700s in the South Pacific. And images are everything, so much so that we don't even realize how much they affect us mentally, emotionally, and physically. In fact, analysts say that these negative images could be directly linked to the suicide rates in teens in the Pacific. In fact, 38% of the world's teen suicide rate happen in the Pacific region. Now, if you look at this photo here, the man in the center, you would think, what is this guy doing based on these negative images in the media? Is he choking somebody out? Or is he uh, doing some type of cannibalistic ritual in the picture? Well, what if I told you that this man spoke several different languages? What if I told you that his writings and letters to President Kennedy are on display at the JFK Museum in Boston, here in the States, in America. And the reason I know this is because this man is not a savage. This man is my great-grandfather, and he was a paramount chief, or king, in the island of Tutuila in the South Pacific. And this leads us to our work, which is visual anthropology. The study and production of ethnographic images that are portrayed and represent a culture or a group of people. We went back to Mexico a lot. We went back so many times that the people that did not let us take their photo actually let us stay in their house. We didn't have to get hotels. They fed us and they told us their story of how they were kidnapped from Africa and brought to Veracruz on the east coast of Mexico. And some of them escaped or ran as fast as they could to the west coast of Mexico and how they survived. And we told them that they were beautiful. And they finally let us take their photo. And here's a few photos. Yeah. And this photo is funny because this is a photo of a photo, of someone taking a photo of our photo. <laughs> In our work, we realize that the more a image is portrayed or projected or suggested or put in our faces, the more it becomes reality to us. And sometimes it's not. And this brings us to the activism part. How could we, this is what we thought, how could we 
take those negative images out of people's minds? How could we project and show the truth of these people, the positive images, in an innovative way enough where people can remember it? And this is how we began to do that. So we took the pictures off of the cameras and we put them on hard drives and we smuggled the photos over the border. <laughs> Don't tell Trump. Okay, okay. <laughs> and we use augmented reality technology and we use video content, 3D images, and other related information about the region, and we superimpose that information on top of the static images in the different exhibits across the country. And here's a, an example of, uh, of a video of how it works. So when you take the device, you put it on top of the photo, and the video plays on top of the photo in real time in augmented reality. This is a picture, a video of a woman we call the chef. She says she's making the original tortillas. <laughs> but when people were seeing these uh, images, you know, coming to life on their, on their devices, um, this is their reaction. And it made the images more interesting to young and old and middle age people. <laughs> And after doing this, we got so much good feedback and so many emails from students and attendees who came to the exhibit, letting us know that they were so excited. They finally got their passports because of them coming to the exhibit. They want to meet these people. They want to go to these indigenous areas. And they just have a whole different perspective of some of them didn't even know that these people exist at all. And this is actually a photo of a group of high school students in Nashville, Tennessee. And they were just so excited to learn about these people that we told them about. And this is another photo of students in Phoenix, Arizona, who had never heard of the Omex civilization, never heard of the Toltecs, didn't know there was black people in Mexico, and they didn't know there was people that looked like them in Mexico. And they asked us to take a photo and pose in front of an Omec head. So the next time you think of a people or you think of a culture or you think of a place, I want you to think like visual anthropological activists. And I want you to imagine, what if you were these people that didn't have a voice? And how would you want to be portrayed? And you might just find that you have more similarities than differences. You might just find something special you might just find an idea or an image worth sharing. Thank you. Thank you.